to be with you all. Uh, wherever you are, morning, afternoon, evening, I greet you. My name is Rehana. I'm here in um, unceded lands of Ganyangahaga people on the Iroquois River in a place called Jojage or Montreal in Canada, Turtle Island. And I work for Bloom. And as an organizational change facilitator, we've really seen over the last few years, the rise in organizations asking for support to change the way they work. And there's lots of reasons why organizations want to change. And often it's because they're faced with an uncomfortable problem. <laughs> like they have a mission to serve a racially diverse community and their staff and board are not very racially diverse and they don't know what to do to change that. Or maybe um, they're experiencing a high rate of burnout. People are stretched too thin and have to take sick leave only to come back to the same high paced work environment. Or maybe there's years of unresolved conflict that are creating a, an environment that is really low trust with high tension and people not feeling psychologically safe to speak and it stifles collaborations. And more and more we're seeing leaders becoming more humble and saying, I don't know how to do this alone. Can we figure this out together? And this is a really pivotal place to be. It's the place of the seeker, the learner, um, a place that is ripe for awakening. And I think it's one of the keys for navigating this world right now. Um, as we know, we are living in times of great transformation and contradiction, a time of death and renewal, where old systems are breaking down while people fight to keep them alive and new systems are being born. And this time of transition and change is, is really complex and it's messy and it's full of contradiction and unknown. And here we are, transition beings and trying to navigate it, like learning to dance in a fire and seeking to rise from the ashes like the phoenix. How do we transform the way we work together to allow for emergence for what wants to be born at this time in the world for our highest collective well-being? I believe it's about us learning to embody being in learning communities wherever we are in our organizations, wherever we work, in our families. Um, and why I think it's important that we, re we reimagine our workspaces as learning communities is that no one of us has the answers to the complex challenges we face of continual state violence, racism, ecological destruction, colonial schooling, poverty, hate, the list goes on. We need to learn to learn from each other and from our experiences, from a multiplicity of perspectives to harness that collective wisdom to move us forward. And I think that if we could see, really see each of us as learners and teachers, and that this life as a, as a continual journey of learning, we could open ourselves up to far more possibilities and a spirit of experimentation and playfulness prototyping, creativity um, that we need. And then maybe we could see our failures as like things to celebrate, uh, like the clown does and rich learning opportunities rather than things to avoid or be punished for. And this I think would open up a lot of psychological safety for participation from voices across power lines that are not often heard or are marginalized, frankly, in our, in our conversations and decision making. And then I think work would just be a lot more fun. Um, and because we spend so much time working, we spend so much time of our lives working. And so I think when we think about the potential of moving to a learning society, like looking at the spaces where we choose to go to work or have to go to work um, is, a, is like a really, is a, has, has a high rich potential for, um, for transformation of our society. And, and I think if we see these spaces as spaces for higher learning, continual lifelong learning, unlearning and relearning, um, there's so much there. So 
I mean, for me, I've always been one of those people that's like, I don't know, I'm just going to try it and then I'll figure it out. Like I'm very experiential. Um, I don't like being told what to do. I, I'd rather just figure it out and um, fail forward. And um, and I was privileged in some of my younger years to, to um, have some foundational experiences working with CFK in, in Nairobi, Kenya, and Shikshantar in India, and being a jammer, a part of a worldwide community of practice with guests hosting gatherings that practice beloved community for co-liberation. All of these organizations are learning organizations and they value shared leadership and experimentation. And having these embodied experiences of what's possible when people are given the space to lead and innovate within a supportive community has been transformative for me. And then I came back to Canada like 10 years ago and uh, started working in the not-for-profit sector. And I felt like so stifled by the rigidity of hierarchical structures and the donor demands that left such little space for adapting in real time and thinking outside the box and co-learning. Um, thankfully, I was fired from one of those jobs <laughs> for being too much of, a, of an experiential learner or experimental learner. And uh, I really thank that person for firing me because it, it catalyzed me to walk out of being an employee and, um, and to walk on to Bloom and to start this, this company to support organizations in their shifts towards learning cultures. Um, and spaces of deep inclusion and belonging across power inequities, and, and really trying to understand how we build care cultures and how we navigate conflict and difference and make change in the world. And so after over the last seven years of experimentation at Bloom, we've learned and unlearned so much, and we honestly are always, always learning and unlearning. It's, it's exciting and very humbling all the time. Um, and while there's always some level of magic in mystery of like what creates the conditions for change, um, we've come to notice some patterns that 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 are that patterns and conditions that can support the building of learning communities. And so here they are. Building a container for respect, relationship, and bravery. Yeah. So the container, it's like this, the bowl that holds the salad, you know, it's like the frame that holds the, the painting. And it's so important that we, that we do that with intention and that we make explicit what the community values or holds as principles and offers light structures to support the community living into those values and principles. Um, building a container that values deep respect for one another through respectful speaking, respectful listening, a respect for difference is really key. Creating space and time in meetings and our work for relationship building, doing check-ins at the start of meetings, getting to know each other, playing games, fosters the conditions for trust and bravery, which all lead to better learning and collaboration. Curiosity, co-creativity, and co-leadership. Ask questions, ask good questions, open-ended questions, be curious. This is a really big key to unlocking the spirit of a learning community. Uh, it allows us to practice being leaders and learners and teachers all the time. Um, and then saying yes as much as possible, <laughs> building on each other's ideas, like the yes, and uh, just like, wow, it, it just like opens, opens the, like all the things that can come out of the clown mobile. You know, the moment we really say no, we start to just like uh, stifle that. So that also allows multiple perspectives to the table, even across power, which is so important because we have, there's a humility, I believe that's important in this, but to know that there's more than one way to slice a mango, okay? And, and then of course, like bringing art and play it, it, as ways of working, as ways of working, not the things that we have to do after we're done working, like that is, that is, really, that is really powerful and fun. Okay, prototyping, learning and evaluation. So inviting the spirit of experimentation to our work. Develop a hypothesis. Okay, I think that uh, we'll have an impact if we if we do this. Okay, fine, go for it. Test it. Gather information about how did that go. Reflect on it, and then make adjustments 
and try again. It's it's really that that cycle of action, reflection, action, but it's with, with prototyping. So try something, learn from it, bring that learning into your next version. Embrace conflict. I know. It's okay. It's okay to disagree. It's okay. I can love you and not agree with you all at the same time. Tension and conflict is natural and normal. And 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 I and rather than avoiding it or, you know, I don't know, doing some something other something else, I think it's really asking us to slow down and lean in and get curious. And and when we can do this, when we can move from breakdown and conflict to breakthrough. Conflict can be generative and healing and build trust and, and help us understand each other and ourselves and, and ultimately create more inclusive and resilient ideas. Enoughness. This, this can be really revolutionary to think that we are enough as we are, like just as we are, regardless of how good we do our job or how well we perform. Um, and yet a space that holds this truth is one that creates the space for people to be where they are on their learning journey and that it's okay to make mistakes and to fail and still be enough. And this love gives us courage to stretch and try new things and appreciate divergent opinions, um, which removes the pun punitive measures that come from not being enough, which is so deep in our society, in our psyche. Um, and the last piece I'll speak to is on wholeness. Um, and so, yeah, creating a, creating a space where all the multiple parts of ourselves are welcome, that I can be like a, you know, strategic thinker and a clown at the same time, um, that it, it's okay to unmask and be vulnerable and be real, speak our truth, and that we can share not only what we think, but how we feel and our intuition and what our body is saying and what the sacred is, is speaking. Um, and this really opens up space for a greater belonging of different kinds of people. And, and, and of course, an access to multiple intelligences. So I wonder, you know, what happens if we let learning, like the process of learning itself, be our, our leader in these times um, and in our, in our journeys to building learning communities wherever we are? Thank you.